Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. How are you? Okay, let's begin. Teacher. Yes. No sé si me permite hacerle una consulta. Dígame. Sí, sí. Sí, puedo ponerla en altavoz o te pongo en audífonos. Bueno, este me entró curiosidad por el mensaje que recibimos. Uh -huh. Y pues bueno, este eh, revisando el chat anterior del grupo anterior en el que estábamos preavanzado uno, uh -huh. recibimos un mensaje similar. Uh -huh. Ahora, este quizás los, entre los compañeros, ¿verdad? No le tomamos mucha importancia y pues lo pasamos en alto, pero fíjese que revisando la plataforma no me aparece el certificado de ese de ese curso. Ah, de verdad. ¿Cómo aparecen los certificados? Sí, ¿cómo aparecen los certificados de los cursos anteriores? Entonces, uh -huh. no sé. Sí tuvo que ver esa advertencia que nos hicieron, pero que la verdad, este, en mi caso particular, yo siempre traté y asistí a todas las clases. No, oh, sí. Y hice en completitud todo lo que me pidieron, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh -huh. no vaya a ser que también haya un malentendido de este, uh -huh. este curso y pase, lo simil pase similar al anterior, ¿verdad? No sé si a los compañeros también le pasó, pero en mi caso no me aparece el diploma, ¿verdad? Vaya. Entonces, eh, por eso le digo que no sé si usted le puede decir ahí a sus colegas que tal vez revisen eso, ¿verdad? Porque, uh -huh. como le digo, recibimos un mensaje similar y no vaya a ser. Eh, no. Sí, estuve viendo que habían recibido un mensaje ahí, ¿verdad? Y, pues sí, a lo mejor ha sido un error. Eh, porque, o sea, a mí me consta, yo entro a la hora, ¿verdad? Y estamos aquí y, y no solamente... Nos estamos 60 minutos, sino que en todas las clases nos pasamos incluso unos minutos. Así que, pues, sí, yo diría a lo mejor ha habido una equivocación en ese caso, porque sí, a mí me consta que muchos de ustedes sí están de principio a fin. Algunos se incorporan un poquito después, supongo yo que por dificultades de trabajo de cualquier otra índole. Eh, con respecto a lo de los diplomas... Pues no sabría decirle, tendría que comentarlo con los coordinadores, ¿verdad? Porque ahí no tengo idea. Pero sí, si me lo comentan ahorita, les voy a hacer yo a ellos el comentario y que estén sabedores de esa situación, ¿verdad? Ojalá se pueda buscar una solución al respecto. Eh, Gladys y Sandra. Bueno, no sé quién va primero. Este, la verdad es que el diploma anterior a mí me lo mandaron por correo. Mm. Bueno, o sea, tal vez mira, sea de... Perdón. Revisando la plataforma, esta mm. vez aparece un 48% de progreso. No sé, no sé por qué aparece así, si vamos casi al día. También tenía mm. esa duda. Honestamente, no les sabría decir también porque nosotros solamente llevamos el control de asistencia, nada más. Que a ustedes les consta que todos los días la pasamos, ¿verdad? Correcto, por eso Ajá. Más eso Ajá. Es que no Ajá, pero bueno, yo me imagino que ha sido una especie de malentendido. Y si se los han pasado a todos, supongo que, pues... No habría demasiada razón que, por qué preocuparse, porque al final los números pues, no, no, no mienten. Lo que necesitan ustedes es un 80%. Eh, les decía ahí, ¿verdad? Que, no, que, ajá, claro, dígame. Lo otro que me extrañó es que dice que no tenemos el 50%, sin embargo, ya nos enviaron el, para la nueva inscripción. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y para eso sí, necesitan no sé. el 50%, ¿verdad? No sé Ajá. qué problema tendrá el sistema que utilizan. No, no les sabría no decir. Uh -huh. Bueno, pero como les digo, les voy a comentar a ellos a ver qué, qué me dicen. Aunque para mí que ellos ya están sabedores también, porque ustedes, por lo que alcancé a ver en el chat, lo han expresado también ahí, ¿verdad? Yo estuve ahí leyendo. La verdad, <ríe> no me metí mucho, no me meto mucho ahí porque no sé exactamente cómo llevan el control ellos, pero nosotros llevamos una una lista de asistencia que está en línea y pues cada vez que me dicen presente yo pongo un número uno luego de nuevo lo paso al final de la clase y todos los que me dicen presente les pongo un número uno en caso que alguien no haya estado no haya contestado entonces le cae un número cero que sí implica que no estuvo en clase verdad pero sí a todos se les va tomando eh, sí dígame 
Aunque si, si gustan, por, por orden que vamos levantando la manita, ¿verdad? Va Sandra. Eh, nada más eh, consultaba a mí, porque a mí me daban muchos problemas la compra y me decían que eh, en cuanto a la asistencia son bastante pocas las personas que eh, han asistido, digamos que el 100% del tiempo que hemos cubrido completamente. Entonces eh, yo no entendí que a eso se refería. Eh, y lo otro es que... Eh, siempre se hace eh, como para adelantar el papeleo y que vayamos a tiempo se hace lo de la inscripción y ya uh -huh. si no lo cumplimos pues ya ello ya es como que bueno, voy a deshacerme de este documento porque realmente no, no, no lo cumplimos y así, uh -huh. tienes que estar aquí conmigo ok sí entiendo más o menos que así funcionan las, esas cuestiones. Alguien me quería participar, pero no sé quién me había dicho. Rosa era. Solo Ay, escuché no, la no, voz. Sí, una pregunta. Solo una, una, perdón, antes que comencemos, compañeros. No eh, conmigo. Eh, solo una cuestión, si, si no estamos con el micrófono, tal vez sería de ponerlo en, en, en silencio para que no interfiera el, el ruido de fondo de, de todos a la vez, ¿verdad? Ok. Rosa. Sí, una pregunta, vaya. No sé si, si, si será un malentendido de, de la plataforma o qué sé yo, pero mi pregunta ahora con esto, con una notificación que hizo el soporte, es que si, sí, vaya, yo me falté un día y lo reporté a, a, soporte, a, a un soporte. Uh -huh. Yo no sé si queda esa información a ustedes o, o ahí queda. Porque esta es otra también, porque uno puede reportar, pero si no le llega información a ustedes, pues uno que... Que ya sale de su responsabilidad. Sí, eso sí, por supuesto. Eh, recuerden que el, el porcentaje que se pide es el 80%. Es decir, en alguna ¿Ah? ocasión tal vez podemos faltar a la clase y eso no, no quiere decir de que solo por eso ya no vamos a poder pasar el nivel. La cuestión es que nos llegue al 80% al final del curso. La cuestión con Insaforp es que eh, no, no se... No se Digamos, no es una cuestión de inglés corporativo, sino de INSAFORP, es un lineamiento de ellos. Y para INSAFORP no hay excepciones. O sea, puede pasar lo peor del mundo, pero en el caso de ellos es como que estuvo o no estuvo. Y hasta donde yo tengo entendido, muy poco o nada se puede negociar en el caso de ellos. ¿verdad? Así que por eso es también la insistencia. Eh, de que se pueda, digamos, de que traten de estar en la mayor eh, cantidad de clases posibles y conectados también eh, lo más que se pueda de tiempo, porque todo eso se va contabilizando. Ahora, ¿cómo se contabiliza exactamente? Creo que es un control que yo, por lo menos, como, digamos, quien organiza, bueno, ni siquiera he organizado yo la reunión, sino que ya están dadas, eh, no lo tengo yo. En realidad, yo solo tengo un usuario y una contraseña con el cual comienzo y tomo la asistencia, pero únicamente eso. Pero contestando, ¿verdad? Lo que nos comenta Rosa es eh, ese detalle, que uh, para Insaforp es, es prácticamente ellos no hacen excepciones. Es decir, para ellos o estuvo o no estuvo, ¿verdad? Y ahí la insistencia, ¿verdad? De, de, de inglés corporativo a que tratemos de estar en la mayor parte de clases. Uh -huh. okay. Pero por, digamos, perder una clase, no es que diga usted, híjole, ya la regamos, ya no, ya no voy a pasar al siguiente. No, no, no se va así. Aunque sí, por supuesto, hay que, hay que notificarlo, ¿verdad? No, o sea, yo, yo le hago la consulta porque este, han habido detallitos, ¿verdad? Que a uno lo hacen a veces dudar y porque también uh -huh. yo entiendo que los de soporte pasan bien ocupados, son los que revisan los papeles, pues. Y por sí. pequeñas cosas, o sea, recordemos que a quien nos afecta son a nosotros. O sea, uh -huh. no, Así yo, es. Yo siento que, pues, con lo que hubo uh, a mí me abrió bastante duda y por eso uh -huh. le contestaba la pregunta. Bueno, lo que, como les comentaba, de verdad, vamos a, voy a tratar de comunicarme con la coordinación y expresarle, expresarles este, sus inquietudes. De igual manera, eh, como todo esto queda grabado, entonces ellos también tienen acceso y lo pueden ver directamente, lo que ustedes han dicho y lo que yo les he estado explicando también. 
Y ahí queda constancia, ¿verdad? De, 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 de todo esto que estamos hablando, que es algo bueno. Es algo muy bueno. Así que vamos a consultar. Eh, bueno, si nadie tiene más consultas, de las cuales <risa> desafortunadamente no tengo muchas respuestas y lamento decepcionarles. Eh, comenzamos entonces con el contenido de la clase. Vamos a compartir pantalla y a tomar asistencia. Ok. <coughs> Attendance list. Just a moment. Ok. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Present. Thank you. Ah, ya le puse el número uno. <laughs> Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Present. Thank you. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Present, teacher. Thank you. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present teacher. Thank you. Gabriel Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. I'm here. Thank you. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Present teacher. Thank you. José Luis Hernández Flores. Present. Thank you. Josué Isaías Najaro Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Lilian Estela Portillo García. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present. Thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Present. Thank you. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Bueno, ya la vimos por ahí también. Hola, teacher, presente. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Thank you. Walter René Quintanilla González. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Maritza Sánchez Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Ok. Por si alguien se acaba de incorporar. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Está por acá. Present. Thank you. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Olivia. No, no estamos. Ok. Just let me check. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. All right. Everybody, welcome once again. This is Inglés Preavanzado Modulo 2, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. And this is session number nine, and today is January the 30th of 2023. So what are we going to do today? Well, we start with the snapshot. Okay, at your service. That's the name of the new unit that we're going to study today. Snapshot, you have eight commonly offered services. Okay, so eight commonly offered services. The first one is house painting, language tutoring. I do this. <laughs> uh, music lessons, essay typing, pet sitting, house cleaning financial services, and handyman services. So before we do this, before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So you have eight commonly offered services. These are the services that you normally pay for, okay? Because, you know, painting a house can be very difficult and time consuming and very messy. So sometimes people pay other people to paint their houses. Okay, Gladys Imelda. Essay typing. Essay typing. Essay is what we call in Spanish una composición. Uh -huh. Una composición. That's an essay. So essay typing, sometimes people hire, probably not in El Salvador, but in other countries, they hire people to type the essays. 
because they have the capacity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Rosa Esmeralda, you're welcome. Strategies. Husband. What is it? Husband. Um, I don't understand. What 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 is it? Which one is it? Um. Let's say this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, six. seven, six. Uh -huh. House cleaning. Uh -huh. No, this is uh, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six. House cleaning. Well, uh -huh. this is when you when you pay somebody to go to your house and clean, sweep the floor, mop the floor, dust the shelves, etc. That's house cleaning. Mm -hmm. You need to clean your house, like you can as you can see in the picture, right? There's a bucket, there's a broom. I think it's a broom. And there's a vacuum cleaner. Okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes we pay for this. Okay. In my case, I can't. I do it. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about the vocabulary? No more questions? Okay. So there you go. Let's see. Have you ever paid for any of these services? Have you ever paid for house painting? I have never done this, okay? Um, have you ever paid for language tutoring? Never. Okay. Um, I don't I don't get I don't pay for this. They pay me for this. <laughs> then music lessons. Have you ever paid for music lessons? No. Essay typing, I don't think so. What about pet sitting? Have you ever paid somebody to, you know, take care of your pet? For essay typing, uh, have you? Me. Ah, yes. okay, okay. Yes. So you have paid for this, or they no, pay you? They pay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, all right. So you do this, interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, you must be very fast. Try. <laughs> okay, you try. Okay. Okay. You must be. Okay. You must be. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, what about house cleaning? Have you ever paid for house cleaning? This yes. is this is much more common. Lillian says yes. Okay. Okay. That happens. Mostly when people have a maid at home. Okay. An empleada domestic, right? When people have a maid at home you pay for this house cleaning financial services have you ever paid for financial services normally you pay an accountant i have <laughs> every year i do this basically in february okay I was accountant. who's an accountant I, are you an accountant okay wow well, okay I, 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 I hate it I hate it now. <laughs> ah, okay, you hated it, but you you did it in the past. Okay, yeah. interesting. All right, and what about handyman services? Handyman services is pretty much everything you do around the house. You know, fixing the door, uh, plumbing services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is also very common. Okay, have you ever paid for handyman services? Who has? Come on, carpintero, don't you know, an albañil or Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Many, 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 uh, let's say, um, occupations there, okay? For example, could be a carpenter, a uh, construction worker, or a plumber also, etc., etc. okay? When something is uh, broken in your house, okay, you have to pay for handyman services or <laughs> you fix it yourself. That's the alternative, okay? You can also do it. But in my case, um, first, I try to fix it myself, okay? And if I can't, then I have to call somebody, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the money, <laughs> that's the problem. Okay, so here we go. These are eight commonly offered services. Let's continue. Let's take a look. So you have perspectives, okay? Listen, well, we're going to read it, actually. Uh, we're going to read uh, an advertisement for Hazel's personal services. Would you use a service like this? And then you have Hazel's personal services right here. 
do you ever have questions like these? I need a volunteer to help me read this, please. Who can help me? A volunteer to read. Practice your pronunciation. Okay, you have Gladys Imelda and then Lilian Estela. And maybe Gladys, you can help me read all the first part right here, all of this. And Lillian, you can help me read the Hazel Offers section, this uh, black uh, box and this part. So Gladys, please, you begin. Okay. Do you ever have a question like this? Where can I get my hair cut for a reasonable price? Do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? Where can I get someone to upgrade my computer? I do. Do you know <laughs> where I can have my little jacket clean? Mm -hmm. And this, please. Okay. Do you know where you can have all this thing done? Call Hazel and six four six five 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 twenty one twenty one. Okay. Thank you. So uh this is what we have. Do you ever have questions like these? Where can I get my hair cut? Okay, for a reasonable price. Do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? Where can I get someone to upgrade my computer? Do you know where I can have my leather jacket cleaned? Do you know where you can have all these things done? Call Hazel, 646-555-2121. Now, Lillian's going to help us read this, Hazel Offers and the final line. Okay, Hazel Offers. Um, computer support, mm -hmm. repairs, mm -hmm. beauty services, mm -hmm. financial services, laundry and dry cleaning, mm -hmm. pet sitting. Mm -hmm. if, if Hazel doesn't offer the service you need, she'll find someone who does. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah, thank you. So Hazel offers computer support, repairs, beauty services, financial services, laundry and dry cleaning, pet sitting. Wow. If Hazel doesn't offer the service you need, she will find someone who does. Guaranteed. Well, she does everything right there. So um, that's the idea. But Probably here you have seen some structures that are a little bit weird, and that's what we're going to study today. I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to use my, my whiteboard. <laughs> so you have this. Where can I get my hair cut for a reasonable price? Where can I get my hair cut for a reasonable price? Look, get something done get my hair cut there you go the second one is do you know where i can have someone fix my bike okay do you know where i can i sorry do you know where i can have someone fix my bike have a person do something okay that's another structure that we're going to study this week okay and then the same happens here. Where can I get someone to upgrade my computer? And do you know where I can have my leather jacket cleaned? This is something that we call the passive causatives. And we're going to study that right now. Now, um, let's take a look. Lesson objective. This is lesson objective 4.0. By the end of this class, participants will be able to describe a service performed for them by someone using someone else using have or get. What is that? Take a look. This is the grammar focus, okay? That's uh, section 4.1. There is a nice video with Miss Jessica explaining everything. I highly recommend you watch it. It's very good. So have or get something done. Now you use have or get to describe a service performed for you by someone else. What is this? This is when you don't do it. This is when you pay another person to do it for you, okay? So active sent, active voice. This is a form of passive voice, by the way, okay? If you remember the passive voice from, you know, previous levels, 
we're going to use it here. But this is a special form of the passive voice. It's not the standard thing. It's a little bit different. So everybody, please, uh, let's pay close attention. The active sentence, do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? Okay, you can have Hazel's personal services fix your bike. You can get a repair shop to fix your bike. This is the active causative. And then we have the passive causative. Do you know where I can have my bike fixed? You can have your bike fixed at Hazel's personal services. You can get your bike fixed at a repair shop. So as usual, you know, this is the only piece of explanation that the manual offers. It is my duty, of course, to expand this and give you a little bit more. And we're going to start not with the active causative, but with the passive causative. And then we're going to move into the active uh, causative. Not today, but this week. So take a look. This is extra. Passive causatives. Looks difficult, but it's not difficult. You will see. You can see the picture. So the roof of Sandra's house was damaged, okay? So she called the builder. You can see the builder here. This is the builder. And yesterday he came and repaired it. Active voice. Now, what is the passive causative? Sandra had the roof repaired yesterday, okay? Sandra had the roof repaired yesterday. This means Sandra arranged for someone else, <clears throat> somebody else to repair the roof. She didn't repair it herself. There was a problem with the roof, but she didn't go up the ladder and try to fix it herself. That would have been dangerous for her because she's not an expert, okay? She doesn't have experience doing this. Also, getting on top of a roof is dangerous, okay? So that's why you have to call the professionals. And she called the builder. So Sandra had the roof repaired. This means she didn't repair it. She told the person to do it for her. If you have something done, you arrange for somebody to do it for you. Let's compare. If I say, Sandra repaired the roof. What does that mean? It means that she repaired it herself. She got into the she got onto the rooftop and repaired it. That's the meaning of this sentence. Sandra repaired the roof. But if we say Sandra had the roof repaired, that means she arranged for somebody else to repair it. She paid a person. She paid a repairman. Okay, a builder. And that person went to her house and repaired the roof. That's the thing. To give you a better example, let's talk about haircuts. I have a question for you. When you need a haircut, do you cut your own hair or do you pay a person to do it? I pay. You pay, of course, right? Well, not me. <laughs> I cut my own hair, but I am a special case here. But yeah, the thing is, I haven't done it. I have done this like for 10 years. Can you imagine? So um, normally, if you say, I cut my hair, that means I do it. But if you say, Let's say I have I cut my hair, let's say every month. For men, this is probably okay. But well, let's talk about ladies. Every three months, probably. So, but what if you say I have my hair cut every three months? That means I go to a hair, uh, well, to the hairstylist, but I pay someone to do it for me. That's the meaning of it. So if I say I cut my hair every three months, that means you do it. You pick the scissors and the clippers and everything and you do it. Okay. Some people do it. 
I do it. <laughs> But if you say, I have my hair cut every three months, that means that you pay another person to do it, which is normally what happens in 99.9% .9 of the cases, okay? So the thing is, uh, this is the structure that you use when you want to express that another person does something for you, okay? At the beginning, it may be a little bit difficult to understand, especially because in Spanish, or at least in our country, we don't use a similar expression all the time, okay? For example, when you get a new haircut and you want to express it in Spanish in El Salvador, you don't say, me mandé a cortar el pelo. Nobody talks like that, honestly, okay? In Spanish, you say, me corté el pelo, como que si uno mismo se lo hubiera cortado. But in reality, it, that doesn't happen. You pay a person to do it for you, okay? So you have to be careful because if you say in English, I cut my hair, people will understand that you did it yourself. But if you say, I had my hair cut, ah, people will understand that somebody else did it for you. So moving on, there's a conversation. I'm going to zoom in. Did you make those curtains yourself? And the other person says, yes, I like making things. How about this one? Did you have those curtains made? That means, did somebody else did uh, made them for you? Did somebody else make them for you? I'm sorry. And then you say, no, I made them myself. Now, what is the structure behind this? Before that, I just want to make sure that you have understood the main concept of it. Choose the correct sentence, A, or B for each picture, okay? I want you to tell me, raise your hand. The first picture, Richard is cutting his hair or Richard is having his hair cut? Jasmine, Vanessa, and then Gladys, and then Gabriela, and then Sandra, okay. Letter B. Letter B. He's having his hair cut. Richard is having his hair cut. That is correct, okay? Because somebody else is doing it. Gladys, what about number two? Tommy is cutting his hair or Tommy is having his hair cut? Tommy is cutting his hair. That's right. Tommy is cutting his hair. Nobody's helping him. He's going, he's doing it himself. Thank you. Number three, Gabriela Stephanie. Kate is painting the fence or Kate is having the, the fence painted? Uh, letter B. Kate is having the fence painted. Are you sure? This, ah, by the way, this is Kate. <laughs> the, the girl in the picture is Kate, all right? So is Kate painting the fence or is she having the fence oh, painted? Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Katie, letter A. Letter A, a that's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was my fault because I didn't specify that this is Kate. Okay, well, I need to correct this. Thank you. Uh, Sandra Cecilia. Number four, they are taking a picture or they are having their picture taken? That is correct. Okay, good. Okay, the main idea is understood. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Now, what about the structure? Take a look. This is the word order. Normally, you have to use have. You need to use the subject and have, and then the object, and then you have to finish with the verb in past participle. This is the key. You have to use a past participle. This is the passive voice. If you remember, you know, previous classes, some of you, I guess, with me and some others with a different teacher, uh, when you are using the passive voice, you always need to use the past participle form of a verb. So passive causatives are a form of passive voice. So you need to use the past participle. So you need you have to use have, then an object, and then a past participle. The tricky thing here is this, the verb have. Because the verb have can be in affirmative form, negative form, question form, and it can go in any verb tense, like present simple, present continuous, past simple, present perfect, past perfect, et cetera, et cetera, also with a model. So the tricky part is here, the first box. 
because you need to conjugate the verb have. If you're talking about the present, then the present. If you're talking about the past, it's the past. For example, what if I say, I have my haircut every three months. This is present simple. So you have to use have in present simple. But if I say, I have my hair cut yesterday, that is past simple. I'm going to exemplify it here. Let's see. Okay, so take a good look. I have my hair cut every three months, present simple. That's why you use have in present simple. But if it was yesterday, you'll have to use have in past form. I had my hair cut yesterday. And what happens, for example, if you are at the hair salon, at the hair stylist, and somebody calls you on the phone and they ask you, hey, how are you? What are you doing? And you say, um, right now, <laughs> you can say, I am having, that will be present continuous. Into just a moment. I am having my hair cut right now. That's present continuous. Okay. So the thing is, this part is where you have to be particularly careful because it can go in present simple, past simple, present perfect, et cetera, et cetera. It can go in the future, models. You, you, you can use it with models, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what changes, but the rest stays the same. You use an object and after that, the main verb in past participle. You see, object, main verb in past participle. Object, main verb in past participle. This is what you have to be careful with, the verb have. So you have some examples. Rachel have the roof repaired. Okay. Now look, this is past simple. The second one is also past simple, but in question form. Where did you have your hair cut? You know, ladies, when they find a friend, say like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. I love your hair, right? Where did you get it cut? I need to go there. Right? So then you recommend the hairstylist. Ah, yes, I went to this place. They're very good. A little expensive, but they're good. So, third example we are having the house painted. This is present continuous. That means that right now, somebody or a group of people, okay, they are painting the house. That's the idea. What about the next one? I think you should have, now with a model, I think you should have that coat cleaned. And the last one, I don't like having my picture taken. No me gusta que me tomen fotos. I don't like having my picture taken. Okay. So, we say, how often do you have your car serviced? That means that you take it to a garage and they check it and they do whatever is necessary to it. So how often do you have your car serviced? And you don't say, how often do you have serviced your car? Careful there, that's the wrong word order. Our neighbor is having a garage built. Have the object and the verb in past participle. If you say, our neighbor is having built a garage, that's incorrect, so be careful with that. Your hair looks nice. Did you have it cut? That's correct. You have have, the object, and then the main verb in past participle. But if you say, did you have cut it? Mm, that doesn't make sense. It will be incorrect. Before we continue, I would like to know if you have any questions, because I know that this topic is, um, Sometimes a bit confusing, mostly because we don't have a similar structure in our native language, which is Spanish. So, do you have any questions before we continue? No questions? Okay. Oh. The, the song structure like the... 
uh, most complacent. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm a little confused uh -huh. about it. No. You're a little bit confused about what exactly? I'm sorry. About all. all about all everything. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So well, um, take a look, right? Um, this is the structure that we use when, again, when you pay another person to do something for you. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. First, you need to use have all the time. You can also use get, but we're going to, you know, get to that part later. So you use have, and then you need an object, okay? For example, if the roof was damaged in a storm, for example, where a big mango fell on it and broke it, then you have to repair it. But often we are not, let's say, the most qualified people to do these things because they are difficult or because they are dangerous. You know, fixing the roof can be very dangerous. So you have to call the professional. And when that happens, you have to use the verb have. Then you need to use the object, which in this case is the roof. And after that, you have to use the main verb, but in past participle form. <clears throat> like this, Rachel had the roof repaired. But then again, you have to be very careful with this part. The verb have can be conjugated. Could go in present simple. Present continuous, present perfect, past simple, past continuous, past perfect. You can use it in the future with will, the future with going to. You can use it with models also. So are we always uh -huh. we, we are using the, the verb have and the, the difference in the tongue. Mm -hmm. The different tenses. Mm -hmm depending on the circumstances, right? Like uh, what I was showing you just a moment ago. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Okay, like this. If you say every three months, ah, okay, that's an action that happens again and again and again. That means you have to use present simple. So you use having present simple. If you say yesterday, this is a finished action in the past in also in a finished period of time. So you know that you have to use past simple. Have past simple. If you say right now, it's an action in progress in this moment. So when that happens, you use present continuous. Okay, and mm -hmm. when, when we are using the models and other? Models, depending on the circumstances. Remember that different models have different meanings. For example, you have should. You use should normally when you want to recommend something. Okay. Imagine that somebody. Uh, I'm sorry. I think your your microphone is is not working like like it usually does today. <laughs> uh huh. That. Oh, so much better. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Answer. Oh. <laughs> okay. The, the, the word could. Ah, could. Yeah, yeah, that's another model. Um, you can use it to express possibility. Well, I'm going to give you some examples. All right. Imagine yeah. that uh, your car is making a strange noise. You're driving your car, it goes like, <laughs> okay, so it's making a strange noise. Mm -hmm. And you're driving and I'm the person sitting next to you and I tell you, mm, Gladys, do you hear that noise? Okay, then I start giving you some advice. I can tell you, um, you should have, okay, you're using have in this case with a model. You should have your car checked. But what if the noise is terrible? Maybe it's making a horrible uh, noise. I'm sorry? It's like an advice. Only. It's advice. It's like advice. Mm -hmm. It's like advice. Oh. You should have your car checked. But what is, if it's making a terrible noise? And that noise, it, it's, it's, it's really bad. And what if it's 
it smells bad also like something is burning inside wow mm -hmm. okay and you, it's then I will tell you it, ah you see <laughs> flames now probably not that much but then i will tell you hey uh, gladius you must okay have your car checked okay so okay. you're using a different model here okay because it it gives you a different meaning if i say you should have your car checked that sounds like i'm giving you some advice i hear something maybe it's a good idea you just take the car into the garage you know have a mechanic take a look at it yeah but yeah. then if i tell you you must have your car checked okay this is serious okay you can have a really bad accident so that's the thing so it all depends on the verb tense and also the modal auxiliary that you're using but the I rest some yes? practice we we get at more more compression yeah compression. that's exactly what we're going to do <laughs> as usual you okay. know that i always bring extra exercises okay thank you you're welcome so um but the, again right this is the part that doesn't change you need to use the object and then the verb in past participle always in past participle so remember it's it's good to have a list of uh, uh, irregular verbs okay because those are the ones that don't follow the rules so exercise time write sentences in the way shown use it or them as the object you can use object pronouns okay for example rachel didn't repair the roof herself. So Rachel no arregló el techo ella misma. Muy peligroso, muy difícil. Así que lo mandó a arreglar. So she had it repaired. Have, you're using have in past because it's an action in the past. It is the object. It is the roof. And then the main verb in past participle. She had it repaired. Lo mandó a arreglar. What about number two? I didn't cut my hair myself. No me corté el pelo yo solo. Peligroso que haga todo. Chachajeado, como dicen. <laughs> okay, I didn't cut my hair myself. So, what is it here? Follow the example. Who knows the answer? Josué, and then Gladys. Uh, had it cut? I had it cut. Mm -hmm. I had it cut. Me lo cortaron. Va bien. No me lo corté yo mismo. Me lo cortaron. I had it cut. Okay. Gladys, number three. We didn't clean the rugs ourselves. We, we had cleaned the rugs. Um, well, remember that first you have to use the verb have, in this case, in past, then the object. The objects are it or them, object pronouns, and then the verb in past participle. So we didn't clean the rugs ourselves. We had it clean. Okay, better, but the rugs, that's a plural noun, not singular. Oh, uh -huh. we had them clean. We had them cleaned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. La mandamos a limpiar, right? Oh, nos las limpiaron. We had them cleaned. Very good. Number four, who wants to try? Sin miedo a participar, vamos. Lo peor que puede pasar si participamos y no tenemos la respuesta correcta es que... Vamos a trabajar para llegar a la respuesta correcta. Ahorita Gladys, por ejemplo, se equivocó, pero ahí la fuimos guiando, la fuimos guiando hasta que ella misma llegó a la respuesta, ¿verdad? Con mucho respeto siempre. Ok, who wants to try? Ben didn't build that wall himself. Irregular verb, by the way. Uh, José, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is up. <laughs> Only up. Oh, ok. Se le iba a cansar la manita. <laughs> okay. So, um, who wants to try? Jenny Sanchez. He had it built. built? He had it built. Correct. 
Mm -hmm. La mandó a construir. He had it built. Thank you, Jenny. Number five. I didn't deliver the flowers myself. Sandra Cecilia and then Ever de Jesus. I, I had it. No, no. Good, but the flowers, that's a plural noun. I had, I had them delivered. I had them delivered. Correct. Thank you, Sandra. Ever, number six. Sandra didn't repair her shoes herself. She had them repaired. She had them repaired. She had them repaired. That is correct. She had them repaired. Good. Number seven, who wants to try? Astrid Michelle, James didn't fix his computer himself. He had it fixed. He had it fixed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Very good. Thank you. Number eight, who wants to try? Number eight, Jasmine Vanessa. I didn't. I, okay, okay, please. I had it washed. I didn't. I didn't wash the car myself. I had it washed. Correct. Thank you, Jasmine. Very good. Number nine. Who wants to participate? Olivia. They didn't. Oh, sorry. There's a mistake right there. I need to correct it. it says paint should be paint. Okay. Uh huh. So uh, they didn't paint the house themselves. They have been painted. It's only one house. Uh -uh. They have they have it painted. They had it painted. Oops. They had it painted. Good. Thank you, Olivia. Very good. And number ten wants to try the last one. René, Robert didn't design the logo himself. Okay, he had, he had it designed. He had a design. Mm -hmm. Correct. Very good. Very good. Okay, so that's just one exercise of several that I have. So <laughs> it's almost time. So, well, let's do one more. This is good practice. Now, this is a big topic. We're going to study this the whole week, <laughs> okay? So passive causatives, exercise number two. Put the words in the correct order. You have painted, had, a few weeks ago, the house. What is the correct order uh, for this sentence? Gladys. We have painted the house a few weeks ago. Okay. The structure always remember is have, then the object, which in this case is oh. the house, and then the past participle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have the house a few weeks ago painted. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Remember, it's have, then the object, and immediately after the past participle. So we have. Oh, oh, oh. Aha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have the house painted a few weeks ago. That's right. We had the house painted a few weeks ago. That is correct. Jose Luis and then Josue Elias. Josue Isaias, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Estoy poniendo otro nombre. Okay, and then Rosa Esmeralda. Uh, Jose Luis, number two. She has her car serviced once a year. 
She has her car serviced once a year. Correct. Very good. Josué Isaías, number three. It's a question, so this is a bit more difficult. Um, have you eyes? Uh, have you eyes? Taste. Have your eyes? I'll give you a, a hint. Uh, no, that's not the right order. <laughs> but I'll give you a hint. The first have is an auxiliary verb. Okay. It's not the, not, not the verb have as a main verb. This is an auxiliary. It's present oh, perfect. Oh, present perfect. Okay. Have had your eyes, your eyes, uh, taste uh, res recently? Um, not really. It's a question. It's a question. So the first one is an auxiliary. Always remember that in a question, first you have an auxiliary and immediately after the subject. What's the subject? The subject is usually hey, a person. Your, your eyes. No, that's the object. Um, have taste. Mm, after in a question, always remember you use an auxiliary, and after that you need the subject. The subject is a person most of the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's one of the words. Do you do you do you give up? Do you need help? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I saw Sandra raising her hand and also Gladys. Okay, Sandra. Let's let's hear Sandra's version. Have you had your eye tested recently? Correct. Have you had your eyes tested recently? Te han revisado los ojos recientemente? Have you had your eyes tested rec uh, recently? That's it. So there's the subject here. Uh, there's the auxiliary have, then the subject and have. This is present perfect in question form. So th this is why I'm telling you that this is the difficult part of this, conjugating have, because it could go in any verb tense and also could be affirmative, negative, or question form, OK? Rosa, do you want to try number four? Or do you have a question? Rosa? Um, I have been, no, I done my, my having, uh, no. I don't um, like having. I don't. My I don't my haven't uh, my haven't like it. the chair. Uh, chair. No, that's hair. The hair. Okay. All right. The first part is okay. I don't like having. I don't like having. I don't like having. So far, so good. Hasta ahí va bien. I don't like having. But what about the rest? Good. That's the past participle. When you use the structure, you have to use have, then the object, and then the verb in past participle. So. Um, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't like. OK, what you told me at the beginning was good. I don't like having. You can I use. Don't like having. I don't like having. 
my good? Uh, no, not really. You say? I don't. I haven't. Um, I haven't. Okay. I got share. Uh, you hair? have hair. Hair. Okay. So it's probably a bit diff difficult at the end. Maybe somebody can help us. Uh, Sandra? Sandra to the rescue again. <laughs> I don't like having my hair cut. Mm -hmm. I don't like having my hair cut. Si no me gusta que me corten el cabello. I don't like having my hair cut. Okay, thank you for your participation. Number five. A bit more difficult, but here we go. Olivia Osorio. I I have cleaned uh, it. It have cleaned. This one is more difficult. <laughs> Let me warn you, because the sentence is longer. If if have cleaning my suit, my suit, my suit, mm -hmm. uh, have mm -hmm. uh -huh. no, yes. to to cost five fifteen dollars. Mm, no, not really. Okay, this this sentence is a bit more complex. Let's see, because of the time, because it's nine, nine and one now, we have to finish the class. Let's see who can help us. Gladys, Gladys Imelda. I want to try. <laughs> okay, let's try. Let's try. Si no, it poco a poco llegamos a la respuesta, no hay problema. Uh -huh. It have my suit clean cost cost to fifteen dollars. Not no. really. Not really. It's different. Who wants to try? Let's see. Vamos, entre todos llegamos. <laughs> Uh-huh. Se lo voy a decir como sería normalmente en español. Okay, but before let's listen to Sandra. It goes to fifteen dollars helping my suit. Okay, better, but still, there are two words that don't go in the right place, right there. But we're getting close, okay? So, aha. Uh -huh. Jose Luis. Uh, first, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the word cost is a verb. Yes, it's a verb in past in this sentence. It cost $15 to have my suite cleaned. There you go. It cost $15 to have my suit clean. Me costó $15 que me limpiaran el traje. Mm -hmm. There it is. <laughs> And the last one, as soon as possible, need translated to have this document. Lillian. This document that you need to have this document translated as soon as possible. You need to have this document translated as soon as possible. That is correct. Very good. Nice. <laughs> Tomorrow we will continue. We'll have more exercises and also uh, we have to study the use of get, which is um, it's an alternative to using have. 
And also we need to study the active causative because that's that's not included in today's class because of the time, of course, but we still have the whole week. We have Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday to finish this. It's a lot of information, but we're going to try to do it little by little. I'm just going to call the attendance one more time. Just one person I believe was missing. Um, Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. You're here, right? Here. Okay, thank you. Ahí estamos todos. Todos tienen un número uno hoy. O sea que todos están. <laughs> okay. Everybody, uh, thank you. And I will see you tomorrow. Take good care. See you, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank good you. night. Thank you tomorrow.